Buenos dias, third graders. It's a great day to make it a great day, and we've got a great reading lesson for you today about comparing and contrasting with informational text. But before we get into the books, I thought it'd be a good idea to warm up our brains with comparing and contrasting using a favorite character. I know some of you guys were really excited when that new Sonic movie came out last month. I was too, because Sonic was actually one of my favorite characters from video games and cartoons when I was growing up. Today I thought it might be a good idea to start off by comparing and contrasting the old Sonic and the new Sonic. So one of the lessons we've done the most this year, a favorite of ours, has been that readers compare and contrast. Remember that means we're telling how something is the same when we compare and how something is different when we contrast. To warm up your brain today, let's take a look at old Sonic when Mr. Olsen was growing up and the new Sonic that you guys are seeing here in the year 2020. As you watch two video clips, I want you to think, how are these the same, and how are they different? Okay, readers, so what did you come up with? How is old Sonic the same as new Sonic? And how is old Sonic different than new Sonic? Here's a few ideas. One, they're the same because Sonic is really fast in both. Two, both have an evil secondary character, an enemy, in both cases, Dr. Robotnik is in there. They're different because there are more different enemies in the old Sonic, and in the new Sonic, there are real human characters. So we know we can compare movies, cartoons, video games, but great readers also use this skill of comparing and contrasting when they're reading books. Let's take a look at today's lesson on how we can do that as readers. Today's teaching point. Today, I want to teach you that researchers compare and contrast the information they learn about topics. So far we've used this skill of comparing and contrasting in both genres, fiction and nonfiction, when we've been reading. We've filled out worksheets that look like this where we've compared and contrasted, writing the similarities between books and the differences between books. We've compared and contrasted characters, what they're like on the outside and what they're like on the inside. And we've done that when we've read fantasy, like Dogzilla and Cat Kong, realistic fiction, like Win dixie and Stone Fox, and biographies as well, like Martin Luther King and Ruby Bridges, or Harriet Tubman and Dolores Huerta. We've said things like, the characters are similar because they both and the characters are different because they both. Then we went even deeper when we read it, traditional literature and fables. We compa compared and contrasted story elements like character traits, setting, problem, solution, and the morals and lessons learned in books like The Three Little Super Pigs and The Three Little Javelinas and Cinderella and Alita. As you can see, we've done comparing and contrasting in a lot of different genres. Today we're going to try it using informational texts. So remind yourself of today's teaching point. Researchers compare and contrast the information they learn about topics. Today let's take a close look at peregrine falcons and hawks 
and think about the ways that they are similar and different. So for each topic, let's take a look at the subtopic of hunting and see what's the same and what's the different for these two raptors. Let's first look at the hawk. Hunting hawk. Hunting red tails can spot prey 1,000 feet or 305 meters away. Mice, squirrels, rabbits, snakes, and birds are on the menu. How about for peregrine falcons? Peregrine falcons have long toes and talons to catch and hold prey. Sharp, curved beaks are perfect for eating meat. Peregrine's main prey is birds. You might want to pause this video and think for a moment. What is the same about hawks and peregrine falcons? And what's different about hawks and peregrine falcons? As a researcher, it's always a good idea to take notes. So let's organize our thinking using this worksheet. Over here we have hawks. Over here we have peregrine falcons. And here we filled in a few of the ways that we saw that they were similar or the same. Number one, they both are carnivores that eat meat, such as other birds. Number two, they both use talons and sharp beaks to catch their prey. These are ways that both birds are the same. We also saw a difference, though, when it came to hunting. Hawks eat a mix of mice, squirrels, snakes, and small birds in their diet where the texts on peregrine falcons told us that they eat mainly small birds. We didn't completely fill in our worksheet yet, so it might be a good idea to continue our research and look at another subtopic. This time let's look at dangers and helpers for each animal. For hawks, red-tailed hawks face dangers. Some red-tails are hunted by great horned owls. Others are hit by cars or eat poison prey. Let's take a look at peregrine falcons and see if anything is the same or different. Life isn't easy for a falcon. They can be hurt or killed by great horned owls and people. Wild peregrines can live 10 or more years. In the subtopic on dangers, we found another similarity for both hawks and peregrine falcons. They both are in danger from humans and great horned owls. Great horned owls are a predator for both. Unfortunately, we didn't find another difference in that subtopic, so we still have one blank spot. I want you to take a moment and think back to what you learned about hawks and peregrine falcons last week and see if you can fill in the final difference by yourself. Good job today comparing and contrasting. Not only did we compare and contrast video games, we use the same skills with informational text. As you're reading your Read to Self books this week, keep using this skill each and every time you read. One more thing for you today. Instead of a read aloud, we're going to be watching a Brain Pop Junior video with Annie and Moby about a word called classification. In this video, they're going to teach you the new vocabulary words for this week and a skill that researchers use when they sort animals into different groups. It's a really important thing as we're studying animals, so make sure you click to watch the Brain Pop Junior video, and we'll see you back again tomorrow for another reader's lesson.